and welcome again to this particular session. In the last session, I had a discussion with respect to question number five. I gave you a lengthy discussion and lots of analysis with respect to this particular question. But since last night, I have been flooded with lots of messages to come to give you a complete solution regarding this. Anyway, I'm simply going through the question once again just to remind you and then I will go for the complete solution. This was your question number five, part B I'm talking about. And last in the last session, we had seen that their share capital is this much and general reserve and general reserve of subsidiary company and especially a profit and loss account of subsidiary company you need to take into account. And this was the item regarding which I had a discussion that holding company had taken a loan from subsidiary company and they have represented it at 12,60,000. Whereas amount of loan was actually 11,20,000. So 1,40,000 is the interest. That means the holding company has done the entry for interest due because they have taken the loan. So they must have passed the entry profit and loss account debit to, sorry, interest account debit to loan from S limited. They must have passed this entry in their books. But subsidiary company, because in the books of subsidiary company, this loan amount is represented at 11,20,000. So that means subsidiary company hasn't done the entry yet. We talked about this. And then regarding this particular question, there are two more items which you need to pay attention to. One is land and building, closing value 270 and furniture and fixture because both these items have some revaluation adjustments. Then equity shares in S Limited represents the amount of investment. This is the point which I was trying to tell you. 11,20,000 loan has been given by subsidiary company and if you will go going to if you are going to compute what we call interest at the rate of 15% from 1,6 onwards till 31st of March 2022 it will be equal to 1,40,000. So they have represented actually 12,60,000 but subsidiary company hasn't passed the entry for the same it seems. So now subsidiary company will pass the entry and the entry will be uh, it, now interest is again to us and loan amount will increase so loan account debit to interest account and ultimately this interest will be credited to profit or loss account of subsidiary company. Then we have so inventories, trade receivable, cash at bank. And we were talking about this particular fact that in this particular question in this date which is 01-2021 I told you even in the last class that logically this date should have been 1-4-2021 but at the same time I also talked about this particular fact that even if this date is 1-1-2021 it is not going to have any replication as far as solution is concerned. So you can say this way around that we had on 1-4-2021 25,000 share if we presume that this is the date and if I presume this date as 1-4-2021 then I would say on 1-4-2021 we purchased 25,000 shares correct of S limited when the credit balance of profit and loss account is 1,87 and general reserve balance is this much. Importantly in this question it was given that S limited acquired some more equity share and how to compute this additional share I talked about this in the last session. Then in this question, S Limited has declared a dividend at the rate of 20% on equity share for the last year, 2020-21. So 20% will be considered as pre-acquisition dividend and pre-acquisition dividend rules. You need to understand that first of all, it is deducted from profit and loss account, opening balance of profit and loss account, then holding company's share will be subtracted from consolidated PNL and will also be subtracted from what we call investment account. Further, it is given that S Limited declared and paid an interim dividend at the rate of 20% per annum. <clears throat> because in this question, it is per annum is written and it is also written that this dividend has been paid for the half year ended 30th of September 2021. So that is why in the last session, I told that we have to compute 20% of share capital and into because per annum is given into 6 by 12 so it will be 50,000 this will be considered as post acquisition dividend reason being is that uh, it is clearly written that this dividend has been declared out of current year's profit that also in this question it is given that S limited has gi given two shares for every five shares as bonus issue but no accounting effect has been given to it means that neither subsidiary company nor holding company has passed any entry for the bonus issue so far. Then in this question, this was the tricky line and here some controversy is there, land and building, which is stood in the books on 1-4-2021 was considered as 7,5,000 on 1-6-2021. I told you even in the last session, logically in my opinion, this date should have been 1-7-2021. 
But if we will retain the state, then only thing is that our complications will increase with respect to additional depreciation. Similarly, furniture and fixtures which stood in the books in the beginning at 3 lakh was considered worth rupees 1 lakh 5,000 on 1 6 2021. So, revaluation which is generally done on the date of acquisition here in this question is given on 1 6 2021. Then, H Limited and S Limited agreed with effect from 1st July 2021 for services rendered and H Limited should charge 10,000 per month. So, there is an agreement that H Limited will provide some services and H Limited will charge the subsidiary company for these services. The agreement took place on 1-7-2021. Now, time period from 1st July 2021 till 31st of March 2022 would be 9 months. So, 10,000 into 9. Holding company now will charge 90,000 rupees from subsidiary company. So, on account of this subsidiary company's profit will decrease while profit or loss account of holding company will increase. Further, it is also given in this question that in June 2021, abnormal loss, uh, goods cost in 23,500 got destroyed and 2,000 were paid by insurance company. So, net abnormal loss is 21,500 and abnormal loss is added to the during the year profit. Then it is subtracted from the period in which this loss has taken place. Then there is another line that H Limited owed 3 lakh for purchases of stock from H Limited. Because it is given that S Limited owed, that means S Limited must have purchased 3 lakh worth of goods from H Limited. And to confuse you, it is also given that out of 3 lakh worth of purchases, 2 lakh 88 thousand worth of goods have been sold by S Limited at some profit. But this is irrelevant information. We are not concerned with the goods which have been sold by S Limited. Out of 3 lakh, what we are more concerned of with is how many goods are still what we call in the stock of uh, still with S Limited at the end of the period. So out of 3 lakh, 2 lakh, 88 thousand worth of goods have been sold out. So 12 thousand worth of goods are still with S Limited. So unrealized profit will be computed on the remaining stock. That is 12 thousand. Rate of profit is 20 percent on cost. So on sales it will be equal to 1 by 6. So 12 thousand into 1 by 6, 2 thousand will become your unrealized profit. Now because it is a case of downstream transaction because this time H Limited is selling the goods to S Limited. Correct? So, first of all, the 2000 unrealized profit will be subtracted from inventory and will be subtracted from consolidated PNL. Correct? And then also one more line is given that on 1 1 2022, S Limited sold H Limited a machine for 240,000 at a loss of 25% on cost. Yesterday we talked about this particular fact. I sold you something for 240,000. I sold you a machine and I am telling that I incurred a loss of 25% on cost. So, if I will presume cost has ended margin as and loss as 25, then selling price will become 75. So, 25 by 75 will become rate of loss on selling price. 25 by 75 means 1 by 3. So, if I will compute 1 by 3 of 2,40,000, I will get the loss. Loss is equal to 80,000. That means cost of this machinery must be equal to 3,20,000. So, 3,20,000 worth of machinery has been sold for 2,40,000. First of all, it is a case of upstream transaction because in this case, subsidiary company is selling the goods. In case of upstream transaction, generally we talk about unrealized profit, but here there is a case of unrealized loss. So, because unrealized loss of 80,000 has taken place, first of all, it will be added back to the machinery in the consolidated profit and loss account because unrealized profit is subtracted. So, unrealized loss will be added. And similarly, now we will take the share of holding company and the what we call minorities in the unrealized loss and we will add it to their respective PNL. Holding company share of unrealized loss will be added to consolidated PNL and minority share of loss or uh, unrealized loss will be added to their interest. This is and finally this is the market point most important point of this particular question market point we call it. It is given that at the end of the year H Limited is having uh, 42,000 share. Now I will tell you the solution. Because some controversies with respect to dates are given, so we may not be able to derive the exact answer, but because of these, these dates, which is having a difference of at least one month, so we will come very close to the answer. So, these misprints are playing really very spoiled sports. Anyway, now I tell you this complete solution of this particular question. Intentionally, yesterday I didn't show it to you. 
The reason was that actually I wanted you to attempt it by yourself. First of all, if you remember in the last session, I began in this manner. Because it is given to us that at the end of the year, we are having 42,000 share. At the end of the year. And I also told you that my accounting year in this particular case is starting from 1-4-2021. Current accounting year is starting from 1-4-2021. And it is ending on 31st of 3 2022 We are also given that on this date, we are having 25,000 share. Further question states that on 1-7-2021, we acquired some more share. How many shares we are... We do not know at this particular moment. And further, it is given that by the end of the year, we are having 42,000 shares. By the end of the year, we are having 42,000 shares. Indirectly, it means if I am having 25,000 share in the beginning and I purchase some additional shares, AS additional shares, and I also received some bonus shares, so total must be equal to 42,000 at the end of the year. And since in this question, your bonus rate is given to you, two shares for five shares. Now, suppose if you are having five shares, you will get two bonus share and after bonus shares, you will have seven shares. Isn't it or not? Before bonus issue, if you have five shares, then after bonus issue, you have seven. So after bonus issue, if you have 42,000 shares, so prior to bonus issue, 42,000 into five divided by seven, it means you must be having 30,000 shares. So you have found out that at the end of the year, now I can say at the end of the year, before bonus issue, I am having 30,000 shares. I can say it in this manner now. At the end of the year, I am having 30,000 shares prior to bonus issue. Now I can say it in this manner. And earlier I am having 25,000 shares. So it means on this particular date, I must have acquired 5,000 shares. This is how I will derive 5,000 shares. This will become my date of acquisition also because on this date I am not having the control. Now I am having the control. So additional share I told you 30,000 minus 5, 25,000 shares. And bonus share is equal to 12,000 shares, correct, which you received. So now your date of acquisition will become 1-7-2021, actually not 20. 1-7-2021 and holding company share will be now you are having 30,000 share. And subsidiary company is having total 50,000 shares. So that means your share is 60%. Non-controlling interest holder or minority interest, they are having 20,000 shares out of 50,000 shares. So their percentage is 40% or 3 is to 2 will become the ratio. Correct? As I told you, in this question, there is pre-acquisition dividend. 5 lakh is the share capital of the subsidiary company. 20% is the pre-acquisition dividend, which they paid for last year. An interim dividend will be equal to 50,000. That is 5 lakh into 20% into 6 by 12. In this case, interim dividend means post-acquisition dividend. I told you, I have already given you the rules of pre-acquisition dividend and post-acquisition dividend also. Pre-acquisition dividend will be subtracted from opening balance. Holding company share will be subtracted from their PNL and then later on from investment account. In case of post equation dividend, we add it to during the year profit and the respective share of holding and minorities will be subtracted from their respective interest. Now we come over to the analysis of the profit. This is the important part of this particular uh, question. First of all, I am having closing balance 80,500 as we had seen in the question, subsidiary companies. Then from it, I will subtract opening balance 1,87,000 but from the opening balance, first of all, I am going to subtract. I am going to subtract pre-acquisition dividend. Now, pre-acquisition dividend is 1 lakh. I told you pre-acquisition dividend will be subtracted from the opening balance. So, your net opening balance will be equal to 87,000. That is after payment of dividend. 1 lakh 87 minus 1. So, now from the closing balance, you will subtract. From closing balance, you will subtract the opening balance. Now, unfortunately, you are having minus 6,500 at this moment. Don't worry about that. Now, you add post equation dividend. I told you post equation dividend is added to during the year profit. This is known as during the year profit. This is my during the year profit. The difference between closing and opening balance. Now, in this case, I will add post equation dividend 50,000. Then I told you just a moment ago that this time in this question, some expenses on behalf of subsidiary company have been borne by 
होल्डिंग कंपनी बट सब्सिडरी कंपनी हैज इन पास एनी एंट्री फॉर द सेम बिकॉज होल्डिंग कंपनी हैड टोल्ड देम वेरी स्पेसिफिकली डेट वी आर गोइंग टू चार्ज यू फॉर दीज एक्सपेंसिस सो एट द रेट ऑफ टेन थाउजेंड फॉर नाइन मंथस होल्डिंग कंपनी हैज बॉन द एक्सपेंसिस ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ सब्सिडरी कंपनी सो नाउ सब्सिडरी कंपनी विल सब्जेक्ट Correct. Now, holding company will charge the subsidiary company, so profit or loss account of subsidiary company will get reduced. So minus ninety thousand. Now you will subtract here. Then in this question, there is abnormal loss twenty three thousand five hundred minus insurance claim net abnormal loss twenty one thousand five hundred. I have told you several times is always added to during the year profit. All these items will be adjusted in the during the year profit. Then regarding interest, I told you subsidiary company hasn't passed any entry yet. because they have to receive some interest from holding company because subsidiary company has given loan to holding company so they will receive some interest from the holding company and interest amount is 1 lakh 40000 it so it will increase the profit of subsidiary company so oh, minus 6500 now i will add 50 subtract 90000 add 21500 and then add 1 lakh uh, 40000 so i will get total during the year profits 1 lakh 15000 this total during the year profit will be divided in pre acquisition period and post acquisition period now pre acquisition period is 3 months and post acquisition period is 9 by 12 so 1 lakh 15000 into 3 by 12 will be equal to 28750 and 1 lakh 15000 into 9 by 12 will be equal to 86250 Now I also told you just a moment ago that abnormal loss first of all is added to during the year profit. Then it will be subtracted from that period in which abnormal loss has taken place. Since abnormal loss has taken place in the month of June, that means in the pre-acquisition period. So from pre-acquisition profit, abnormal loss will be now subtracted. So pre-acquisition profit will be treated as seven two five zero, and post-acquisition profit will be treated as eighty six thousand two hundred fifty. Is it clear to you? Now we come over to general reserve. Closing balance of general reserve of subsidiary company, as per what we call balance sheet, is eight lakh forty thousand five hundred. As per information number one, it it was given that opening balance is seven lakh eighty thousand five hundred. So the difference of these two means amount transferred to general reserve during the year sixty thousand. Out of this pre acquisition will be fifteen thousand three by twelve, and post acquisition nine by twelve will be forty five thousand. Now we move over to analysis table. in the analysis table what i am supposed to do now in the analysis table i am trying to find out on the date of acquisition how many net assets were there of subsidiary company because net assets is always equal to equity so we can also say that equity on the date of acquisition basically what we are computing through this analytical table so on the date of acquisition equity always means share capital plus reserves correct So first of all, in order to find out equity on the date of acquisition, equity means net assets of subsidiary company on the date of acquisition, which is one seven two thousand twenty one. Here you have to pay attention. Share capital. First of all, you write. Although share capital on one seven two thousand twenty one is not given, but so many times I have already told you, whatever share capital balance is given at the end of the year, that balance must be the same on one seven two thousand twenty one. So on one seven two thousand twenty one, share capital of subsidiary company must be two lakh. Two lakh worth of bonus issue is given because effect is not given so far. So that means this share capital is prior to bonus issue. So that is why we will add bonus issue. So total share capital of subsidiary company. Now we can say. On one seven two thousand twenty one is equal to this much. Is it clear to you or not? Now, other equity. Now on the date of acquisition, I found I'm trying to find out other equity. Other equity means profit or loss account and general reserve balance. Now profit or loss account in the beginning of the year is eighty seven thousand that is given to us, and in the first three months pre acquisition profit seven thousand two fifty which we just computed here, correct? We computed that pre-acquisition profit is equal to seven thousand two hundred fifty, isn't it or not? So seven thousand two fifty. So if I am having opening balance as eighty-seven thousand, and in the first three months I earned a profit of seven thousand two fifty, that means on the date of acquisition, profit or loss account balance must be equal to this much. Is it clear to you? So that is how you are going to find out. Profit or loss account balance on the date of acquisition. Similarly, reserves in the beginning you are having seven lakh eighty thousand five hundred, and in the first three month you transferred fifteen thousand to general reserve. So total balance will be seven lakh eighty thousand five hundred plus fifteen thousand. But in this question now we because now we are preparing the consolidated balance sheet. 
and we have to treat the bonus issue. As you know, when a company issues bonus share, the entry is reserves account debit to share capital. Share capital increases, but the, at the same time, concurrently, our reserves also fall. So that is why I will subtract the amount of bonus issue that is known as bonus appropriation. So I will appropriate it from reserves. I can appropriate it from profits also. So 7,80,500 plus pre-acquisition. So 2 lakh worth of bonus issue I will subtract. So net general reserve, I may say on the date of acquisition is equal to 5,95,500 after bonus issue. Is it clear to you? Now we come to the major point, land and building. One, one student commented yesterday, uh, sir, I think you have wrongly done something uh, with respect to uh, land and building. Anyway, he was, perhaps Ajay was his name. Anyway, he was right. Sometimes the student also skips something. Then I rectified him that we have to compute in this manner. Anyway, now you can have a look here. Land and building. Whenever we do the revaluation, our first target should be to compute the depreciation. In order to compute the depreciation, we take the opening balance, correct? Opening balance is given in the question, correct? Opening balance of land and building is 3 lakh. It is clearly given in the question. And as per balance sheet, their closing balance is 2 lakh 70. So that means during the year, subsidiary company must have, during the year, subsidiary company must have charged a depreciation of 30,000. 3 lakh minus 2 lakh 70. If I am going to divide 3 lakh by 30,000 by 3 lakh into 100, I will get the rate of depreciation, which I told you yesterday also. Then estimated value on the date of acquisition. Now we have to find out whether there is up valuation or devaluation. In order to find out up valuation or devaluation, we have to see to it that on the date of acquisition, what is the value given to us? On the date of acquisition, it is given in the question that land and building was estimated at 7,5,000. Now I have to find out what is the book value of land and building on the date of acquisition. Now see book value on the date of acquisition will be because on the opening date on 1-4-2021, on the opening date land and building book value is 3 lakh. And after two months because on 1-6-2021 revaluation has been done. So instead of writing on the date of acquisition, it is better you can write estimated value on revaluation that is 1-6-2021. In this question, there is some mistake with respect to these dates. So anyway, estimated value on the date of revaluation is 7,5,000. So on the revaluation date, what is the book value of this particular item? See, this particular item, land and building on 1-4-2021 was reflected at 3 lakh. And you have to compute depreciation till up to 1st June 2021, that means for two months. If I will compute the depreciation for two months, we have already computed rate of depreciation 10% into 2 by 12. So that will be equal to 5,000. So if I will subtract 5,000 from 3 lakh on 1-6-2021, on the value, the book value of this item will be equal to 2 lakh. 95,000. So that is the reason on the revaluation date, estimated value is 7,5,000. This is one thing which you have to take care of. And on the revaluation date, what is the book value? Now, book value we have just found is equal to 2,95,000. By comparing these two, you will find out that there is up valuation 7,5 minus 2,95,000. That is equal to 4,10,000. This is your up valuation. So first of all, you will write up valuation in the outer column. Up valuation is a capital nature gain. So 4,10,000. And then whenever there is up valuation, there is always a case of additional depreciation. Now additional depreciation will be computed for 10 months, not for 2 months as Mr. Ajay was claiming on that particular date. Remember one thing, we have to compute additional depreciation for the period which is falling onwards the revaluation date. Revaluation took place on 1-6-2021, correct? And still we have 10 months remaining, so till the end of the accounting period. So for 10 months additional depreciation we have to find out. In order to find out additional depreciation, we take the revised figures, 7,5,000 into 10% Now remaining time period till the end of the accounting, area, accounting period is 10 months. So 58,750 will become your additional depreciation, sorry, it will become depreciation of 7,5,000. It means logically, we have to give 58,750 as depreciation. However, 
we have to subtract from it because this item which is uh, being reflected now at 7 lakh 5000 it is having a book value of 3 lakh in the beginning in the beginning of the year correct so we must have charged some depreciation no doubt about that so how much depreciation i must have charged for the 10 months so 3 lakh into 10 percent into 10 by 12 that means in order to compute additional depreciation you will have to compute depreciation for the remaining months on the revised value and on the old book value so that will be equal to 25,000 your additional depreciation is equal to 33,750 normally additional depreciation is always reflected as a part of post acquisition profits and it is reflected as a sort of revenue nature loss but problem in this question is revaluation is not done on 1 7 2021 in this question revaluation has been done on 1 6 2021 this is the problem actually we are facing that is why i am saying there is some problem with respect to the question anyway but if it is then additional depreciation now we have found out this is additional depreciation for 10 months of course because after date of revaluation, re 10 months are remaining. So this is additional depreciation for the remaining period. But out of remaining period, only nine months will fall in the post acquisition and one month will fall in the month uh, in the pre acquisition period. So what I will have to do, I, I will have to divide this between, I will have to divide this additional depreciation into pre acquisition period which is one month and nine month post acquisition period so one by ten and nine by ten so one by ten will be considered three three seven five so that is the reason one month additional depreciation total additional depreciation for ten months is thirty three thousand seven fifty out of ten months one month depreciation will be considered as a capital sort of loss instead of revenue loss so you will subtract it additional depreciation is always a loss so that is why i have written less 3375 similar is the story with respect to what we call your furniture now furniture rate of depreciation first of all you will compute in order to compute your rate of depreciation i have told you several times all we have to do is to see to it what is the book value in the beginning in the beginning it is given furniture is having a book value of three lakh we have to compare it with the book value as per the balance sheet. As per the balance sheet, the book value is 2,70,000. So total depreciation during the year is 30,000. So this is what I have written, 30,000. Now, now I can find out the percentage. Percentage will be equal to 30,000 divided by 3 lakh into 100. So my percentage will be equal to 10%. So 10% will be my furniture rate of depreciation. Correct? now estimated value on actually i have written date of acquisition it should it should be on 1 6 2021 this is the date of revaluation in this question revaluation is not done on the date of acquisition it is done one month prior to date of revaluation so estimated value on 1 6 2021 that mean on the revaluation date what is the estimated value we have to find out we, we have to we need not require to find out in fact it will always be given that is one lakh five thousand now i have to compare on the revaluation date estimated value with the book value but problem is that book value is given to me in the beginning on one four 2021 book value is three lakh so what will be the book value of this item after two months of course i will apply rate of depreciation 10 percent i will compute depreciation correct depreciation will be equal to 5000 so 3 lakh minus 5000 book value will become 2 lakh 95000 this is what i have written less book value on the date of acquisition 3 lakh minus depreciation at the rate of 10 percent for two months which is 5000 so your book value on the date of revaluation is 2 lakh 95 because your book value is more than the estimated value in this case there is devaluation so devaluation you will write as a negative item correct but when there will be devaluation in this case you will have to find reduction in depreciation in case of off valuation we find what we call additional depreciation so in order to find reduction in depreciation remaining months are 10 months first of all i will take the revised value the revised value is 1 lakh 5000 i will charge 10 percent for 10 months 8750 
then I will take the old value, old value is 3 lakh, I have written 3 lakh 70, 3 lakh into 10 percent into 10 by 12 which is equal to 25,000. It means we have charged 25,000 worth of depreciation already but we are supposed to charge only 8750 so that is that means excess depreciation charge is 16,250 so this depreciation must be reduced. But problem is that this depreciation is for 10 months and out of 10 months, one month is falling in the pre-equation period and nine months are falling in the post-equation period. So I will take one month depreciation, one month depreciation will be equal to 1625. So additional reduction in depreciation is a positive item. So 1625, is it clear to you? So on the date of acquisition, now I can say I will add all these items, 5 lakh plus 2 lakh plus pre plus PL balance on the date of acquisition, plus reserve balance on the date of acquisition, of valuation 4 lakh 10,000 minus additional depreciation for 1 month 3375 plus 1 lakh 90,000 devaluation and and then and then 1625 total I will get 16 lakh 8,000 total I will get 16 lakh 8,000 is it clear to you or not? Now out of 16 lakh 8,000 my share Holding company share is 9,64,800 and minority share or non-controlling interest holder is 6,43,200. This is how you are going to get. That means whatever net assets were there on the date of acquisition out of that your share is this much and minority share is this much. Is it clear to you? Now in this table I have also written post acquisition other equity items or changes in other equity item or simply revenue profits. Under it I have written post acquisition profit 86,250. See earlier when we did the analysis of profit and loss account, here I have written pre acquisition profits, sorry pre acquisition profit and post acquisition profits. So post acquisition profits are 86,250. Share of my parent will be equal to 51,753 fifth and share of minority will be 34,500. Then post equation general reserve 45,000 out of which our share holding company share 27, 2 by 5 18,000 will be minority share. Now additional depreciation, generally additional depreciation is always written here only. But problem was that in this question out of remaining 10 months, one, one month was pre. So that is why we took one month's depreciation in the upper part and nine months depreciation I will write here. Additional depreciation 30,000. 375. Actually, additional depreciation is 33,750. Out of that one month I have written here and nine months depreciation, additional depreciation, I am going to treat it as post acquisition loss. Correct? 30,375 out of which our share is this much, minority share is this much. Similarly, reduction in depreciation, one month we will take in the upper part and nine months we will take towards the lower part that is considered as post acquisition. Uh, additional depreciation, adi uh, sorry, reduction in depreciation, which is a gain to us. So our share is this much, minority share is this much. After having computed and done your analysis, in this question also it was given to you that goods sold by H limited to S limited 3 lakh, which I told you, and goods and out of 3 lakh worth of goods, S limited sold out 2 lakh 88,000 worth of goods, and we are not concerned with that. Out of 3 lakh, 2 lakh, 88,000 worth of goods have been sold, so 12,000 are remaining and the profit on the remaining goods will be 20 by 120 or 1 by 6, that is 2,000. Because it is a case of downstream transaction, 2,000 will be subtracted from inventory and 2,000 will also be subtracted from what we call uh, uh, consolidated PNL. Then again in this question, sale of machine by S limited to H limited. Subsidiary company sold a machine to S limited for 2,40,000 and incurred a loss. Incurred a loss. Now suppose cost price is 100 and loss is equal to 25 because 25% was given to us. That means selling price must be equal to 75. So rate of loss on selling price will be 25 by 75 that is 1 by 3. So selling price is 240, I will apply 1 by 3 to get 80,000 as unrealized loss. It is not unrealized profit, it is unrealized loss. First of all, this 80,000 will be added to machinery, number one. Now this 80,000 will be divided between holding company and non-controlling interest or minority interest. Holding company share will be subtracted from consolidated PNL and NCI share will be subtracted from 
एनसीआई इंटरेस्ट माइनॉरिटी इंटरेस्ट इन दिस क्वेश्चन देयर इज अनदर पॉइंट आल्सो व्हिच आई टॉक्ड अबाउट इन द लास्ट सेशन करेक्ट एक्चुअली डेप्रिशिएशन चार्ज बाय पेरेंट कंपनी because the cost of this machinery is actually 3 lakh 20000 because 2 lakh 40000 and selling an item to you at 240 and i am saying i incurred a loss of 80000 so cost must be equal to 320 so depreciation charged by parent actually parent received this item correct parent received this item at 2 lakh 40000 and they have received this item on 11 2022 so for 3 months parent parent will be under an impression because we purchased this item for 2 lakh 40 so we may think actually that this is the cost for us so 2 lakh 40 into 10% into 3 by 12 we must have charged a depreciation of 6000 on it by the end of the accounting year it is quite natural however we forgot that the cost of the machinery actually i have written here 360 the cost of the machinery is 3 lakh 20000 because we were in aware of that so now we now when the consolidation process will be done now we will come to know that actual cost of this machinery was actually 3 lakh 20 so we should have had charged the depreciation at the rate of 10% of 3 lakh 20 that is 32 into 3 by 12 we should have had charged a depreciation of 8000 that mean holding company will have to give now 2000 extra depreciation this extra depreciation which holding company will provide will be subtracted from consolidated pnl of holding company extra depreciation you cut this line correct this is extra depreciation 2000 so holding company will have to charge 2000 extra depreciation correct now we uh, we need to find out goodwill or capital reserve in order to find out goodwill or capital reserve we see what is the fair value of net assets on the date of acquisition which we have already computed earlier in this table 16 lakh 8000 is the what we call fair value of net assets of our subsidiary company 16 lakh 8000 out of that minority share is 6 lakh 43200 and our share is 9 lakh 64800 correct 9 lakh 64800 now we have to compute the goodwill in order to compute the goodwill first of all i will write consideration or investment actually investment is 4 lakh 60000 but pre acquisition dividend was 1 lakh and our share was 60000 and i told you as far as pre acquisition dividend is concerned that share of holding company will be subtracted from consolidated pnl and from what we call investment so we will consider now investment as 4 lakh So our net investment is four lakh, and we will compare it with our share of net assets on the date of acquisition. On the date of acquisition, total net assets is equal to sixteen lakh eight, and our share is nine lakh sixty four thousand eight hundred. So your capital reserve is five lakh five thousand eight hundred. Let me tell you, it is not absolutely matching with the answer which is given to you. There is a difference of something three four thousand capital reserve as per the solution provided. is 501950 but that is because of the differences in the dates as i told you correct in my opinion date should have been instead of 16 it is it should be 142021 but anyway but this is the way to solve the question point important is this and similarly now nci or minority interest on the reporting date on the date of acquisition 172021 NCI is equal to six. NCI means minority interest. Six lakh forty three thousand two hundred. We have just computed. Correct. This is the share of NCI in the net assets. Now, share of NCI in the post equation profit is thirty four thousand five hundred. Similarly, share of NCI in the general reserve is eighteen thousand. Share of NCI in the additional depreciation. correct in the post acquisition additional depreciation is this much share of nci in the post acquisition reduction in depreciation 5850 and i told you as far as post acquisition dividend is concerned that is added to during the year profit in respective share of holding and minorities will be subtracted from their interest so post acquisition dividend is 50000 minority interest is 40% it will be subtracted uh, from minority interest and share of loss machinery because it was a case of upstream transaction so share of unrealized profit or loss will be adjusted in both holding companies 
consolidated PNL and minority interest. So share of loss of machinery because it is a case of unrealized loss. So it will be added, not subtracted. So 80,000 was the loss, 40%, 32,000. So you can see minority interest is 701,400. Again, there is a slight difference. There is 7,600 and our is 7,400. We are very near to it, but I told you, because of one, man, one month differences in the dates, perhaps these differences are arising. In my opinion, date should have been 1-7 instead of 1-6. It should have been 1-7-2021. Uh, anyway, now, consolidated PNL we are also asked. Now, if you will compute the consolidated PNL, you will write, first of all, balance as per a balance sheet of the parent company or holding company. Then share of holding company in the post equation profit, share of holding company in the general reserve, then additional depreciation which you have written in the lower part, correct? And then reduction in depreciation share of holding company, share in post acquisition profit is subtracted from PNL and subtracted from investment. So now the treatment of pre equation profit is over. Similarly, post acquisition dividend is added to during their profit holding company share will be subtracted from PL and minority share has been subtracted from their interest now share of unrealized loss it will be added because it is a case of loss excess depreciation provided on to be provided on machinery as i told you because we have given a depreciation of 6000 actually we will, we will have to provide depreciation 8000 3 lakh 20000 is the cost of the machinery 10% into 3 by 12 but we have provided depreciation on 2 lakh 40000 at the rate of 10% for 3 months so that means 2000 more depreciation we, we will have to provide it will be subtracted from holding companies consolidated pnl and then unrealized profit because it was a case of downstream transaction it will not affect minority 2000 will be subtracted from inventory and holding com and complete amount will be subtracted from consolidated PL. Then expenses charged by holding company. Now holding company will recover from the subsidiary company. So we, we will subtract it from subsidiary company's profit and loss account and add here. We have already subtracted. So our minority interest as per our calculation is 373. Again, there is a slight difference. But this difference is, I have already told you, is arising because of the some misprints or because of some differences in the dates which in our opinion should be for example question begins with 1 1 2021 whereas the current year is starting from 1 4 2021 that date should be 1 4 2021 and likewise dates which is given 1 6 2021 logically seems to be should be on 1 4 2021 uh, so because of these slight differences uh, our answer will slightly differ, but this is the best analysis which you can get with respect to this particular question. I will solve the sheet of this particular question in my Telegram channel also, and tomorrow you can download it. Correct? Tomorrow after, not tomorrow, uh, day after tomorrow uh, at 11.30 you can download it. Correct? Telegram, in Telegram link is already provided to you. Then in this question, there is another very long question. That is with respect to, with respect to, with respect to, with respect to your cash flow statement. Will you be able to do the cash flow statement question of your own? I will share the sheet. See, this is pretty, pretty long question and it requires a hell of a time to what we call discuss. So anyway, I will try. I will try, I will try. Okay, this is the question. First, let me show you the question so that we can finish up this paper today. And with that, our series on past paper analysis will also end. Correct? So on my part, I have given you as much as I could give. So no one should bother me unnecessarily after this. And this is important point which you need to take care of. You tell me how many faculty have dared to actually give you this solutions. And this is the question, credit cash flow statement. Cash flow statement. From the following extract of the balance sheet of uh, DWA Dwapra Yug Limited and uh, 
this is the balance sheet which is given to you first of all you need to take care of this particular fact that previous year and current year immediately bring down the balances prepare equity share capital account similarly you have in this case preference share capital in the beginning now 2 lakh general reserve in the beginning 4 lakh now 1 lakh 40 profit and loss account in the beginning minus 13,000 closing balance positive 6 lakh 47,000 security premium in the beginning is 20 and now nil capital redemption reserve 1 lakh 50 now 50 and so on employee stock option in employee stock option outstanding 50,000 now 85,000 14 percent deventure 150 now 2 lakh 60 short term borrowings but in bracket they have written 14 percent bank loan so it is basically an item you should read as bank loan 50,000 in the beginning now 40,000 then trade payables 40 and 165 then you have got in this case unclaimed dividend on equity shares unclaimed dividend on equity share is given to you as 20,000 outstanding interest on debenture is also given to you outstanding interest on debenture is 10,000 outstanding underwriting commission is also given to you in this particular question and then provision for tax in the beginning 20 and 40 tangible fixed asset in the beginning at gross value 13 lakh 20 and 16 lakh 50 then accumulated depreciation is also given on tangible fixed asset 3 lakh and 3 lakh 80 intangible asset or goodwill is given to you opening balance 10 closing is 21 opening balance is 10,000 closing balance is 21 then you have been given 10 percent current investment opening balance 80 now 2 lakh 20 thousand pretty long question i have already told you interest accrued on current investment uh, there is a closing balance of 2000 then 8 percent fixed deposit in the beginning is zero and 2 lakh 84 thousand is the fixed deposit importantly you have to note that you are earning an interest of 8 percent on fixed deposit correct 2,84,000 into 8% but you made the fixed deposit on 1st of March 2022 and accounting year will end on 31st of March 2022. So you will compute in this case interest 8% of 2,84,000 for one month only. Correct number one. Second, further it is given that the fixed deposit which you have done will be mature on 31st of March 2020. Now any fixed deposit which will mature within a period of 90 days should be treated as a part of cash and cash equivalent. Honestly speaking within a flick of second I can tell you what is your closing balance of cash. Correct because one of the question is that what is the amount of closing balance. You simply add this and this item. You will get your answer 3,17,000. It must be 3,17,000 answer is not available with me but your closing balance of cash must be equal to 3,17,000 within a flick of second you can tell and then similarly inventories are given to you 1,16,000 1,69,000 this pen sometime create problem 1,69 and 54 and trade receivable 6,13 and 6,43,000 correct First thing which is given to you in this particular question, the dividend including equity dividend 35% were paid on 1st of April 2021. First of all, you need to understand that on 1st of April 2021, your total share capital equity is 6 lakh preference share capital, 5% preference share capital is 4 lakh. Question says that you have paid some dividends. Dividends means equity dividend and preference dividend. Now question says that equity dividend which you have paid is equal to 35%. So 35% of share capital. Equity share capital is equal to 6 lakhs. Opening balance. So this much of dividend you must have paid on equity share. And 5% preference share capital in the beginning is 4 lakh. So 5% that is equal to. 35% of 6 lakh will be equal to how much? 6 lakh into 35% 2 lakh 10,000 and 
20,000. So total dividend is equal to 30,000, 2,30,000. But problem is that question has also given to you, question has also given to you somewhere in, in between when we were going through the question, we saw this particular line unpaid dividend on equity shares. That means in the current year, you must have paid a dividend of 2,10,000, but out of that, you can say 20,000 dividend could not be paid out. Could not be paid out. Sometimes it happens because addresses of the shareholder may might have changed. So, so that is why unpaid dividend is written 20,000. It means equity dividend paid is equal to 1,90,000. 2,10 minus 20 and 20,000 is your preference dividend. So total dividend paid will be equal to 2,10,000. Is it clear to you? Total dividend paid will be equal to 2,10,000. During the year, and this is the, this is a very tricky line which is given to you. During the year, a machine having accumulated depreciation being one third of the cost during the year, a machine having accumulated depreciation being one third of the cost was sold for 50,000, was sold for 50,000 at a loss of 37.5%. Was sold for 50,000. And we are saying that we have incurred a loss of 37.5%. What does it mean? Suppose, suppose, if I compute, Suppose 100 is the selling price, was sold for 50,000 at a loss of 37.5%. During the year a machine, during the year a machine having accumulated depreciation being one third of the cost, that means whatever machine which we are selling, so when we sell the machine, first of all, we subtract from the cost, then accumulated depreciation, then we find out the rate written down value. Then we compare it with the selling price to know our loss or profit. Now question is telling that we sold a machinery at a loss of 67.5%. Suppose 100 is the selling price and loss is 37.5. 37.5 is loss. Correct? So, what would be my cost in this particular case? Or should I take it this way? If my written down value is 100, loss is 37.5, then I must have sold it for 62.50. Suppose this is the cost or written down value of the machinery. And we are incurring a loss of 37.5. That means selling price must be 62.50. And if selling price is 50,000, I can find out the written down value of this particular machinery. That is 50,000 into 100 divided by 62.50. Let me compute and see. It will be equal to 50,000 50, into 100 divided by 62.50. That comes to 80,000. That comes to 80,000. Now try to understand this point. At least you have been able to find out that the written down value of this machinery was 80,000, which you sold for 50,000. So that means if you sold it for 50,000, your loss is 30,000. At least we have been able to find out this much. Correct? Now I have to find the cost. Question says that during the year, a machine having accumulated depreciation being one third of the cost. Now try to understand. Suppose my cost is one. My cost is one. And question says that accumulated depreciation is one third of the cost. Now cost is one, so one third is accumulated depreciation. Now if this is my cost and one third is the depreciation, what will be the written down value? Written down value will be equal to 2 by 3. 
So I know now that if written down value is equal to 2 by 3, then my cost must be equal to 1. Isn't it or not? And I have got the written down value now 80,000. Written down value is 80,000. So now you can find out the cost. That is 80,000 into 1 divided by 2 by 3 or 80,000 into 3 by 2. That is equal to how much? That is equal to 1,20,000. So now we have been able to find out the missing threads that this machinery which we sold, it was having a cost of 1,20,000. One third is the depreciation. Now we can find out depreciation is 40,000. So on this machinery, so that is why the written down value is 80,000 which we have already find out. And we have sold this machinery, sold for uh, 50,000. That means loss is 30,000. Loss is 30,000. Is it clear to you? Question also says that a fully depreciated machine was also discarded. A fully depreciated machine. What we mean by fully depreciated machine? Suppose cost of a particular machine is 100. An accumulated depreciation is also 100. So we may say it, it has got nil written down value. If it has got nil written down value, indirectly it means we will discard this machinery, we will throw this machinery. So this particular line, a fully depreciated machinery was also discarded. So there was a machinery which had some cost, so and but it but it was fully depreciated so it was having a nil written down value and it was thrown away machinery costing 440 was purchased for cash so this is the information which you are going to adjust in your tangible fixed asset later on now question also says that on 1st of january 2022 some current investment costing 2 lakhs some current investment costing 2 lakhs were purchased and some current investments were sold at a profit of 20% on sale. New divent and then question also says that new debentures were issued and bank loan was repaid on the same date. So in this question, there is some information related to what we call current investment. Question says that some current investment costing 2 lakh were purchased. So you will simply write 2 cash and current investments were sold at a profit of 20% on sales some current investment you will take the difference of the opening and closing balance you will find out that some of the investment you are selling it and you are selling it at a profit of 20 percent on sales so that is not a big task new debentures were issued and bank loan was repaid if you will look into now important thing is that everything is done on 1st of january 2022 so on 1st of january 2002 question says that you have issued some debentures you have issued some debentures and bank loan was also repaid on this particular date. You, this particular line will also affect the computation of interest on debentures. Interest on debentures. How it will affect, I will let you know in a short while. The question also says that on 1st of May 2021, 20,000 equity shares of 10 each were issued at the rate of 15. So on 1st of May 2021, 20,000 equity shares were issued at the rate of 10 each at 15. So you are going to pass a simple entry bank account debit, equity share capital account debit to security premium and preference shares to redeem preference share at a premium of 5%. But most of us may think that we are redeeming 20,000 preference share because it is given 20,000 equity shares were issued at the rate of 15 to redeem preference share. How many preference shares are being redeemed that is not given to us? We will have to find out. How we will find out, I will let you know. Question also says that on 1st of October 2021, 1,000 preference shares were issued at the rate of 100 at the rate of 150. Sorry, off rupees 100 at the rate of 150. So we have issued 1,000 preference share also of 100 each at 150 to buy back 20,000 equity share at the rate of 15. So in this question, two things are simultaneously taking place. Buyback of shares and redemption of preference shares. You have done, is, done it in the past. Underwriters are entitled, 
underwriters were entitled to a commission at the rate of 5% on the issue prices of the share. So whatever shares you have issued, you will consider the issue price of those shares and then you will compute 5% of that. That will become underwriters commission. What will be the treatment? I will let you know. Also question says that on 1-1-2022, the business of Y Limited was purchased for 60,000 in fully paid equity shares of 10 each. This is the line. I think we it is similar to December 2021. We purchased a business for rupees 60,000 payable in fully paid shares of 10 each at 20% premium. At 20% premium. The assets included inventories 15,000, trade receivable 10,000, machine 30,000 and trade payables 15,000. You took over some assets and took over some liabilities, some net assets you purchased. But you purchased it for 60,000 and you told to the vendors that you are going to pay them by issuing equity shares of rupees 10 each at 20% premium. And further question says that tax provided during the year is 32,250. And further question just to confuse you and torture you, writes that including tax at the rate of 15% on short term capital gain on investment. That means whatever tax provided is there, it includes what we call tax 15% on short term capital gain on investment. So this is the question. I have solved this question and again I will share the sheet with you. Now let me actually simply explain it further. See here in this particular question, two, three points are very vital. Last point when we were studying were with respect to what we call uh, net assets. We purchased a business for rupees 60,000 and we told them we are going to issue the shares of rupees 10 each at 20% uh, premium. First of all, the net assets which we acquired, inventory is 15,000, trade receivable 10,000, machine 30,000. Total assets is equal to 55,000. Less trade payable, TP, trade payable. So net assets which we acquired is equal to 40,000. My entry will be net assets 40,000. But how much I am paying to the vendors? Vendors means from whom I am acquiring. So I am getting 40,000 worth of business, but I will have to pay to the vendors or the supplier or to the other entity from whom the business is being purchased, 60,000. So the difference will be, of course, treated as goodwill. Now we have to pay to the vendor 60,000. I will divide 60,000 by 12 because I am going to issue share of 10 at 20% premium. So 12, I will divide 60,000 by 12 to know how many shares I am going to issue. So 5,000 shares I will have to issue. Face value of one share is 10, so 50,000, two share capital and two security premium, 5,000 into two, 10,000. This will be the entry with respect to that particular point. Correct. Now I will have to post this entry because first entry is not affecting share capital. It is affecting net assets, goodwill and vendor. However, in this particular entry, who was the credit side of share capital? I will write by vendors 50,000 when I will prepare the share capital account. And similarly, when I will prepare security premium accounts towards the credit side of security premium, I will write here by vendors. Is it clear to you? Similarly, because these net assets are in the form of inventories, trade receivable, machine and trade payable. So I will have to adjust all these items. Towards the debit side of inventory, I can write to vendor or to share capital 15,000. Towards the debit side of trade receivable, I will write to vendors or share capital 10,000. Similarly, when I will prepare tangible fixed asset account, I will write over there to vendors 30,000. Similarly, when I will prepare trade payable account, I will write over there by vendors 15,000. Or I can also write by share capital. Is it clear to you? So this is how this will be treated. And because one more asset has taken place in the form of goodwill. So when we will prepare the goodwill account, Towards the debit side of goodwill account, we will write two vendors 20,000. This is how the treatment will be done with respect to all these entries. Now, in this question, I told you that two lakh equity share capital. Actually, question has question has stated that 20,000 equity shares were bought back. 
So 20,000 equity shares were bought back. It is very important to understand in this particular question. So 2 lakh and premium on buyback is equal to 1 lakh. So my entry will be equity share capital account debit 2 lakh, premium on buyback 1 lakh because at 50% premium we are buying back and 2 equity share buyback account 3 lakh. This will be my entry when I will buy back equity share. Then equity share buyback account debit to bank account I will pay and whatever premium is there I will write off that premium from security premium account, security premium account debit to premium on buyback. This is how my entries will be with respect to buyback of equity share and I will have to post this entry. I will prepare, first of all I will prepare equity share capital account which I have already told you. Towards the debit side I will write to equity share buyback 2 lakh. I will open a premium on buyback account. I will write towards the debit side to equity share buyback account. Then in the equity share buyback account, I will write buy equity share capital buy premium on buyback. Similarly, now I will consider this entry equity share buyback account debit to buyback to bank account. On the debit side of, of this account equity share buyback account, I will write to bank and equity share buyback account will get closed. Next entry is security premium to premium on buyback. So security premium is getting debited. We will write towards the debit side of security premium, premium on buyback 1 lakh, correct? And towards the credit, credit side of security premium because and, and towards the credit side of premium on buyback account, I will write buy security premium account. In this question, we will see that 3 lakh worth of preference share capital is being reading. Actually, at that time, I told you how many preference share capital we are redeeming? It is not given in the question. I will tell you how we will find that actually 3 lakh worth of preference share capital is being redeemed and is being redeemed at 5% premium. So preference share capital account debit, premium on redemption account debit, correct 5% of 3 lakh 15,000 to preference shareholder account. This is your entry. This is due entry. Then you will make the payment to the preference shareholder, preference shareholder account debit to bank account. Correct. Now problem is that you have just seen that you have bought back you have just seen that you have bought back 3 lakh worth of equity share capital 2 lakh worth of preference share capital on account of this what will happen your capital structure will reduce by 5 lakh your total capital structure will get reduced by 5 lakh however we will see that we are also issuing 2 lakh worth of equity share capital and 1 lakh worth of preference share capital that we will see just in a moment. So total share capital is also increasing by 3 lakh. 5 lakh worth of share capital is falling. 3 lakh is by 3 lakh it is increasing but still there is a shortfall. So in order to maintain our capital structure I will have to pass an entry profit and loss account debit to capital redemption reserve account as you used to do in your earlier phases of education so as to maintain our capital structure. Now we move over to the main thing. Opening balance in equity share capital is 6 lakh and closing balance is 9 lakh 50 thousand it is given to you. First of all I have written here two equity share buyback we had just seen that we have bought back 2 lakh worth of equity share capital correct. I have also told you that in the question it is clearly stated that we have issued 2 lakh worth of equity share capital. I also told you that we have bought some assets from the from vendors but don't write here 60,000 because nominal value of share capital is increasing by 50,000 so you will have to write 50,000. How this figure I will get I will explain it later on. At this moment premium on buyback account in the premium on buyback account, see this is the entry actually I had written here. Equity share capital is getting debited. Premium on buyback will get credited. So I will write here 1 lakh, correct? And similarly, where it is? Premium on buyback account. So first of all, in the equity share capital account, I have written here 2 equity share buyback account just to tell you 2 lakh. And then in the premium on buyback account, we have written towards the debit side to equity share buyback 1 lakh due to entry number 1. And in the equity share buyback account, I have written here, equity share buyback account, I have written here 2 lakh and 1 lakh. This is your first entry which I have passed, correct? As far as second entry is concerned, equity share buyback account debit to bank account. Now in the equity share buyback account, I have written 2 bank, 3 lakh, 
correct equity share buyback account debit to bank so this entry is over because we are not preparing bank account and then Whatever premium is there, we have written off this premium, security premium account debit 1 lakh to premium on buyback. So security premium account will get debited. In the security premium, I will write to equity share buyback account. Correct? I will write to equity share buyback account. This is the entry. And to premium on buyback. In the premium on buyback account, premium on buyback account we have prepared, we have written by security premium 1 lakh. Is it clear to you? This is how so far. Similarly, next part is with respect to preference share capital. First entry is preference share capital account debit, premium or redemption account debit to preference shareholder account. Preference share capital account debit. So preference share capital account will get debited. Preference share capital account debit, number one. Then premium on redemption account debit. So premium on redemption will get debited due to preference shareholder. Preference share capital will also get debited due to preference shareholder. Preference share capital account debit. Premium on redemption account debit to preference shareholder account. So on the credit side of preference shareholder, we have written by preference share capital by premium on redemption. Next entry is preference shareholder account debit to bank account. Then after that, whatever premium which we have paid on preference share will be written off. This premium will be written off to security premium account. So I will write here by security premium, this account will get close. And in the security premium account, I will write to towards the debit side to premium on redemption. Correct. And similarly, we have written off premium on buyback 1 lakh. So this is how situation at this moment is there. Right. Further in this question, it is given that we have issued 2 lakh equity share capital and 2 lakh worth of equity share capital. So I will write here bank account debit to equity share capital account to security premium account. My entry will be. So in the equity share capital account, I will write by bank, but I am receiving also some premium also. So in the security premium, I will write by bank. Actually, we are issuing equity shares. 20,000 equity share at a premium of 5. So premium amount will be 1 lakh. Opening balance in the security premium is 20. 1 lakh we will receive. Similarly, in this question, we are issuing 1,000 preference shares. 1,000 preference shares. We are issuing 1,000 preference shares of 100 each. Correct? And these preference shares are being issued at a premium. 1,000 into 50 at a premium of 50 each. Now you have to look here, your preference share capital in the beginning is 4 lakh and you have issued 1 lakh worth of preference share capital and your closing balance is 2 lakh. So that is the reason in this question you must have redeemed 3 lakh worth of preference share capital. It was not given in the question how many worth of share capital you are redeeming. If you are having opening balance 4 lakh, and your balance carry down given is 2 lakh. It is also given in the question that you have issued 1 lakh worth of preference share capital. So 3 lakh worth of preference share capital must have been redeemed. And 3 lakh worth of preference share capital is being redeemed at a premium of 15% which we already talked about. So this is with respect to buyback of preference shares and all. In this question, there was a point with respect to debentures. Opening balance in the debenture is 150, closing balance is 260. Question has stated that on 1-1-2022, we have issued some debentures. So you will take the difference of these two and you can get this figure, 1 lakh 10,000. Issue of debenture, 1 lakh 10,000. Okay, this is financing activity later on. You will write in the financing activity, issue of debenture, 1 lakh 10. But in this question, you will also have to compute interest on debenture paid. Because in the beginning, you had 14%, 1 lakh 50,000 worth of debenture. 14% 1 lakh 50,000 worth of debenture and on 1 1 2022 you issued new debenture 1 lakh 10 so first of all you compute what we call interest on 150 at 14% for 9 months that is equal to 15,750 after this date now you have issued 1 lakh 10,000 more debentures so now you are having 2 lakh 60,000 debenture you compute interest 14% for 3 months that is equal to 9,100 so total interest paid will be equal to 24,850. Interest paid will be treated as financing activity. Once you will write it towards the financing activity and 
also it will be added back to profit and loss account to compute your cash generated from operating activity correct as far as interest is concerned this will be taken as financing activity also given in the question that on the same date you repaid the bank loan now 14 percent bank loan opening balance is 50,000 given in the question closing balance is 40,000 obviously the difference 10,000 you must have repaid on 1 1 uh, 1 1 2022 so in this case again you will compute the interest paid on bank loan you had 50,000 worth of bank loan in the beginning Correct. In the beginning, you had 50,000. So 15,000, 14% for 9 months because after 9 months, you repay 10,000 debentures. So first you compute interest on 50,000 for 9 months, then on 40,000 debenture at 14% for 3 months. So total interest paid will be equal to, will be equal to 6,650. Now interest paid once it will appear in the financing activity and then it will be added back to your what we call cash generated from operating activity when you compute correct in this question as far as trade payable is concerned opening balance is 40,000 closing balance is 165 I told you in this particular question with our company took over trade payable of 15,000. So you can here write by vendors or by share capital. You can also write by vendors. So in this case, my opening balance, if I will add 15,000 also, that is 55, but closing balance is higher. That means trade payables are increasing. So this difference will increase your working capital because increase in current liability means increase in working capital or increase in cash you can say because when we compute cash generated from operating activity then we add increase in what we call current liability so you will add it over there correct one lakh this one lakh will be added for computing cash from operating activity Similarly, outstanding interest is there, opening balance is this, closing balance is 10,000. So whatever this difference is there, it will be used for computing cash generated from operating activity. Now coming to underwriting commission. I have already told you, we issued two 20,000 equity shares at, at the rate of 15, issue price 15, and we issued preference share at the rate of 150. So underwriting commission we will compute on issue price at the rate of 5% so on equity share underwriting commission is this much on preference share is this much total is 22,500 but problem is that in this particular question we have been given outstanding underwriting commission opening balance closing balance is 5,000 we are supposed to pay 22,500 worth of underwriting commission and 5,000 is outstanding that means out of 22,500, I must have paid only 17,500 as underwriting commission. So I will write an entry, underwriting commission account debit to bank, and then I will take this underwriting commission to the profit or loss account because it's an expense. However, underwriting commission paid will be considered as financing activity. And this account will automatically get closed because opening closing balance is nil and underwriting commission you will write here. When you are writing underwriting commission here, it means you are transferring this amount to the underwriting commission account on account of which we can say that our balance is decreasing. So 22,500 we are supposed to pay, 5,000 is outstanding, 17,500 we must have paid during the year. Only thing out of this is that 17,500 will be reflected in the PNL sorry in the financing activity and profit or loss account you will add 17500 for computing cash generated from operating activity provision for tax opening balance is 20000 closing balance is 40 question has given that amount provided amount provided means how much provision you are making during the year so provision made during the year is 32250 but question says that it includes 15% capital gains tax. We will see that capital gains tax is 3000. So amount provided for income tax is 29,250. 
So by adding this two, you will get tax paid as your balancing figure. Tax paid is subtracted as a last item from cash generated from operating activity. And this amount will be added back to your PL or cash generated from operating activity. Now coming over to the tangible fixed asset regarding which I had lots of discussion earlier. Correct? As far as tangible fixed asset is concerned, opening balance is this much and closing balance is this much. Correct? We have seen that we have purchased a machinery. So I have written here to share, share capital. You can also write to vendors. And it is also given in the question that we have purchased. We have purchased 4,40,000 worth of plant and machinery. It is given in the question. Main thing is that we were able to found out that we sold a machinery for 50,000 and we incurred a loss of 30,000 and accumulated depreciation provided on that particular machinery was 40,000. So that is why I have written it is equal to 120. Correct? I have written here balance carried down. What is this? Just wait. It seems. Let me compute it again. 1320 plus. Mm -hmm. 1320 plus 30. Plus 440. Minus 120. And minus. Balance carried down 1650. So 20,000. Okay. This balance carried down is already given. Actually, your balancing figure is 20,000. This is the total 17,90,000. I got confused by that. Mm -hmm. This is your total. So it's okay. So now balance carried down, actually I have written a little bit of words. So anyway, we are going to get this 20,000 as the balancing figure and it will be considered as machinery discarded. Correct? So now, because you are preparing accumulated depreciation account also, you will write opening balance, closing balance. This depreciation, you are going to transfer here 40,000 worth of depreciation. 40,000 worth of depreciation will be transferred here. And because this is fully depreciated machinery, this depreciation will also be transferred here. Correct? Then you are going to balance this account and you will come to know that in the current accounting year, you must have transferred 1,40,000 to accumulated depreciation account. Is it clear to you? And then intangible asset. Opening balance is 10,000. It is given in the question. Closing balance is 21. And we have acquired a goodwill from vendors, 20,000, total 30. Closing balance 21, so 9,000 must have been written off to profit or loss account. Is it clear? Then, current investment account. Opening balance in the current investment is 80,000. Closing balance is 3 lakh. You have been given in the question that you have purchased 2 lakh worth of investment, no problem. Correct? Now, because 80,000 you had in the beginning and 2 lakh worth of investment you purchased, total 3 lakh, so remaining amount is 2 lakh 20. It is given in the question that remaining amount is 2 lakh 20, balance carried down. So that means 80,000 worth of investment you must have sold. 80,000 worth of investment you sold at a profit of 20% uh, on, sales, on sales. So on cost, you will have to find out because this is the cost price because whatever we write in account, that is cost. So it will be 20 by 80. So one fourth of 80, 20,000. So that means you sold this machinery at a profit of 20,000. Correct? This is how you are going to prepare this account. Number one. Number two. Of course, you it will be treated as your investing activity. This will be treated as your investing activity and profit will be subtracted from your profit and loss account balance. Is it or not? It will be subtracted from your PL. And then interest. You will have to compute the interest. Now, this is a case of interest received. Interest received is always considered as part of investing activity. First of all, it will be treated as investing activity and it will be subtracted from PL later on, considered as non-trading income. 
you had 80000 investment in the sorry you had 80000 worth of investment in the beginning so 80000 into 10% just wait let me see 80,000 into 10 percent into 9 by 12 that is equal to that is equal to how much that is equal to but before let me check actually 280 and closing balance is 220 isn't it so we must have sold investment for 60,000 actually I have written here 80,000 it should be 60,000 so sometime even after doing the solution you come across some printing mistakes not printing mistake this is my calculation mistake actually 280 minus 220 60,000 so 60,000 plus 1 fourth 20 by 180 that will be equal to uh, 1 fourth of 60 15,000 that will be equal to how much 75,000 right it is And the profit will be equal to 15,000. What was the rate of profit on sale? That is okay we presume that is 20 percent on sales so or 20 by 80 or 75,000 so profit will be 15,000 and importantly on this profit you will compute the short term capital gain tax short term capital gain tax short term capital gain tax was 20 percent I think was 20 percent or 15 percent I have forgotten. Let me see. Let me see. I think it was 15%. So it will be equal to 15,000 into 15%. That is equal to 2250. So 2,95 and 2,95 will be your total now. Correct, you can total it up by yourself. And if you had opening balance 80 and you purchase 2 lakh and you are remaining with 2 lakh 20, so obviously 280 minus 220, 60,000 worth of investment you must have sold and you must have sold it for 75,000. Correct? So this is your short term capital gains tax and interest I was talking about now you here instead of writing 80 you write 60,000 your interest will be 60,000 into 10 percent 6,000 6,000 into 10 percent into 9 divided by 12 that is 450 once again let me check 60,000 into 10 percent into 9 divided by 12 4500 it is and then we purchased investment for 2 lakh mm -hmm. this is creating problem just wait we had opening balance 80,000 10 percent 9 by 12 this is correct in fact because we are computing now interest and then we purchase the investment so we are having 2 lakh worth of investment and 10 percent for three months it will be because these investments were sold on these investments were acquired on 1 1 2022 so on 1 1 2022 you are having in total 80 plus uh, 2 lakh so now you are going to compute 2 lakh into 10 percent into 3 by 12 your total interest received will be equal to 11,000 it will be treated as part of investing activity and will be subtracted from profit and loss account. And short term capital gains tax, you will treat it as part of financing, as part of what we call uh, your investing activities. It will be treated as a part of investing activities because it is related to investing activity. That is the reason. Interest accrued, opening balance, 
is nil and closing balance is 2000 because your current asset is increasing it will result in decrease in working capital so when you will compute your cash generated from operating activities you will subtract this item fixed deposit you need not require to do anything you simply add it to your closing balance of cash and cash equivalent correct Inventories you had in the beginning 54,000 worth of inventory from vendors you got 15,000 worth of inventory Closing balance is 169. So inventories are increasing increase in current asset means decrease in working capital Similarly trade receivable 643,000 worth of Daters were there in the beginning and 10,000 you acquired from the vendors So total 653 closing balance is 613 now trade receivables are decreasing because trade receivable are decreasing from 653 to 613 it should be treated as increase in working capital increase in working capital and you will add it when you will compute your cash generated from operating activity now dividend paid we have already seen dividend paid is equal to actually 230000 but out of that we have seen 20000 worth of dividend is remaining so 1,90,000 will be your total dividend. So this is how you are going to do this particular question. I will share the sheet and regarding the working with respect to machinery, I have done it here. Answers are absolutely correct, honestly speaking, because I have checked it once. So it all depends upon you now how you can manage this. So on my part, I have done my level best effort to give you the best possible treatments, analysis with respect to every item of this particular question it's a pretty long question you can see i don't think anyone will attempt it especially if choice will be given in the question so on such count we end up this particular session and with that also we announce the end of the uh, scheme uh, end of the what we call this past paper series analysis correct so thanks for being with us shall meet you of course with something else in the next session